check, check. I'd like to welcome Walter King, Justin Zimmerman to the stage. Um, perchance is Nathaniel Lathrop still here? Uh, Nathaniel, I got a message just a little while ago from Hannah. She said that something came up and she couldn't be here, but since you worked on that film, I was hoping that you could represent her. Hello to our live streaming audience and our sincerest apologies. I know we are running about an hour behind schedule right now. We had some technical issues a little while ago that we worked through uh, with our extraordinarily patient audience here. Uh, and thank you for joining us, those of you who are joining us via live stream. We just finished watching the films Go Fish, White Whale, Father Figure. Then we took a nice long break. Uh, then Blood Money, Gun in a Flash, and Another Day as part of our quirky and cool films category. Go Fish uh, was made by Josh Bryan, who I was hoping was going to be here today. It, it perchance is Josh in the house. He said he was going to come down, but uh, I know he has a newborn kid. Doesn't look like Josh is here. Um, Hannah Lilly uh, was the filmmaker of White Whale. She was going to join us virtually, and then I got a message from her just a little while ago saying something came up, she could not join us. But Nathaniel, who joined us earlier for his film Too Much Chow this morning, you were part of the crew that worked on that film, so he can talk about, about that film. Uh, Moria Depkin made Father Figure, who also is an SOU graduate as, from our, our SOU digital cinema program. Uh, Walter here, who I owe a beer or two to, um, <laughs> for because Blood Money was right where things started to mess up, um, made the film Blood Money. Um, Gone in a Flash, made by Justin Zimmerman, one of only a handful of filmmakers who has two films in our festival this year. Congratulations for that, Justin. And finally, Another Day, Summer Martin was going to join us virtually, but I'm sure she logged on, said, where are you, and then said, screw it, and, and left. So... Uh, my apologies, but thank you to the three of you for, for being here. Um, first of all, uh, Justin, um, having two films in, and you also had a film in last year's festival as well, uh, this film, Gone, Gone in a Flash, really fascinating topic. Uh, for those who are my age and are computer nerds, Flash was kind of king right around the time that I was in college. And uh, I vividly remember it, and then just suddenly it was just like the fad move, move, move on, on to the next thing. But your film kind of follows that same sort of theme. Like, it's building to something, and then just, boom, sorry, done, gone. Uh, I thought when I first watched it that it was a preview. I, I didn't think that it was the, the whole film. What, was that intentional? Yeah, I, I had just come off of a feature-length documentary, and I really wanted to go the other way. And I think I had been working on this film for three years, this, this film called Smart, um, Specialized Mobile Animal Rescue Team. And then, a, and then a year of film festivals before we signed it into distribution. And I'd seen a lot of films at film festivals. Usually my go-to with films at film festivals is they would be infinitely better if they were 50% shorter. That's just my own takeaway. And, and I do a lot of teaching, and that's usually where I start even in the scripting uh, stage. And I just thought it would be interesting to attack a subject like this with the with a ferociousness, uh, I mean, I went through the whole uh, production, post-production process, three shoots in Florida, and um, just wanted to try to use the idea that this guy had, had reached the pinnacle of, of fame and fortune, which now we know are likes and views, and it didn't really mean anything, and was his work, work even worth it in the first place to a certain degree? So all that stuff swirled around together, and I, I made this film, and um, it was great to see it on the on the screen. It had been a little bit, um, but I'm I'm very proud of it. And uh, Jim's kind of connection to pop culture, even though most people don't know he exists. It's fascinating because when you consider that whole views thing now, that was all pre-social media. So now, entire careers are built off of just how many likes you get, how many hits on TikTok, and people are making millions, a handful of people are making millions of dollars just by being a YouTube or TikTok social media influencer. Jim could have been king of all that, but instead he's just like an asterisk. Well, and I know a lot of these, because of my comic background, I know a lot of these folks like the Joe Cartoon, the Frog in the Blender, and the Napster guys, and and uh, Salad uh, 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 salad Fingers, and yeah, and and last week a friend 
was at a we uh, no not a, a Primus concert and they were showing Salad Fingers stuff and and so I was trying to figure out which one of these kind of subjects to really tackle in this short form and Jim being in Florida and 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 actually not being able to make it to that to that level even though he's been arguably seen more than all of these folks just made it kind of irresistible to me to to, to follow. Walter, uh, this was your world premiere screening, correct? Yep. Less, le less than ideal circumstances, and I apologize for that. But still, eventually, great to see it on the big screen, right? Absolutely, yeah. So your film, when we talked before, you had said that this came out of the, an idea of Quentin Tarantino. But to me, when I first saw it, I saw the final scenes of Good, Bad, and the Ugly. I was like, this is straight out of... Uh, early Clint Eastwood, good, good, the bad, and the ugly, where you jump right into the action and there's no real context and you're spending half the time of the action wondering who are these people and what's going on. Um, why did you want to take that tact with your film of like jumping right, like going to the finish without, most films will have like an, you know, the setup and context and backstory to build the characters to that moment. And you're just like, hey, you know, here's this setting, now figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, you know, the, um, the funny thing about this film is I never really intended to make it. Um, it was just a writing exercise. I wrote the script in about an hour, and I showed it to a friend of mine who passed it around the Eugene film community, and then next thing I know, I had like 22 people reach out to me wanting to audition for it. And so the, the real origin was essentially I was watching Bonanza at work, <laughs> And I saw this scene and I was like, oh, this could be a really interesting scene, but it's full of like the worst cliche tropes. And so I kind of was like, what, you know, what if someone in a modern lens kind of rewrote this and just flipped everything? You know, the damsel in distress is the one that saves the day and the hero never gets out of his rope tie. He's just hiding behind a bush for, you know, the climactic ending of the film. And I think I just found something darkly funny about that. And then, yeah, somehow it got made. I don't, it's a blur. <laughs> we can get into the whole making of, because there's kind of a hilarious story behind that. And as a reminder, um, all of these filmmakers, there are extensive Q&As with them available on the on-demand side of our festival. So we can, you, if you want much more information, certainly go up and talk to them about their film, but also you can go online, those of you who have a festival pass or an online pass, and get much more, more detail. Nathaniel, thank you for, for stepping in. Um, Hannah wanted to join us, and then she said a family thing came up and, and she couldn't be here. But uh, White Whale was uh, the film about the college music, or the musician who's determining whether to stick with the band or, or possibly go to Berkeley College of Music. You worked on this film with Hannah. It was Hannah's senior thesis. Uh, extraordinary film, especially I love the whole opening credit segment where it's incorporating it into books and shoes and, and everything else. Uh, how involved were you in this film, uh, films at development, were working on it, and can you talk a little bit about just the overall experience of making this film? Yeah, um, well, I, uh, I was in an editing class with Hannah um, my first term there, and then uh, late in that term she, um, uh, she asked if I knew anything about sound recording. And I had some experience in that. She's like, well, you want to be a boom operator? And I said, sure. Um, and look, really looking forward to being part of you know, student, uh, student interaction. Um, uh, so I was primarily doing um, sound recording and then uh, the, the gaffer um, and editor needed to hop out uh, on the last day. So I was also helping with lighting as well. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a very long weekend. Uh, I think we were, we did a 12 hour, 13 hour, and then an 18 hour day. These were all in the same weekend. And, um, but yeah, it was a blast. Everybody was tired. We did some reshoots. Um, um, but it was, it was really fun working together and bouncing ideas off and, uh, doing a lot of little tiny um, adjustments here and there and finding out how to use our frame efficiently and everything. So since you attend the Southern Oregon University Cinema Studies program, and they are one of our sponsors for this year's festival, by the way, we had s multiple uh, films. Actually, in this block alone, uh, a father figure um, was by an SOU graduate. 
uh, White Whale by, by Hannah Han Lilly, your film or, or earlier today. Uh, so SOU puts out some fantastic films and we're always, we, we, we love being able to showcase the films that, that come out, out of that program. Andrew does a terrific job with it. But are a lot of the SOU films collaborative like this? Because it looked, I recognized a lot of the names and the credits of, okay, that's a student that submitted before, that one's submitted before, that one's yeah. been a part of our festival. Uh, do a lot of the projects end up being just like a whole series of group projects? Yeah, I think um, I was able to be part of another um, another student film that was also through SOU. Um, and what I was finding is that you know the the students will um, decide on what their capstone thesis will be, and whether they want to direct a film or or do whatever in it. So, like Hannah, she picked to to direct this. I think. Well, I may be wrong on that. I won't say that. Um, but she was directing it, and then other people were doing um, their thesis on you know, producing or cinematography or, or lighting or sound or whatever. And that was the case with the other the film that I helped with as well. Um, so you see a lot of the similar names in them because you know they're classmates, and they find each other's strengths. And they're like, hey, do you know sound, or do you know lighting, or camera editing, or whatever? And then they're able to utilize their peers' uh, talents for that. Okay. Terrific. Uh, Walter, we, we need to talk about the, the weird circumstances of how you filmed this, because you're based in Eugene, you filmed this out in the Bend area, which means you were road trip, well, why didn't you just get a hotel? You were road tripping from Eugene every day, right? Because uh, I'm insane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you probably spent more on gas than you would have on, on hotel rooms in, in, in doing that, <laughs> you, you realize. You would have saved a bunch of time, but also, uh, what was the thing with, with the location we talked about before, about how... You found like the perfect spot, and then the, when you went back to film, yeah, that was uh, awesome. We did my wife and I, who was a, a producer on the film as well as a makeup artist. Um, we went, we scouted all around the Ben Ben Redmond area, found the perfect location. It was pretty secluded. We were there for two and a half hours, didn't see another person show up. A week later, on our first day of the shoot, we pull into this gravel parking lot, and there's like 30 cars. And we're just losing our minds. We're like, oh my gosh, there's going to be people walking through our set all day. And we get to our little spot or whatever, and I just start walking around, and I'm talking to these people. I'm like, is there some big event happening? Like, is this like a, you know, AARP, like, get together? What's going on? <laughs> and all these people were not associated with each other. They just chose that day, which was a Friday, I think, Friday afternoon, just go out to this secluded trail. And there had to have been probably 50 or more people that were just walking by. Oh, that's it. And I'm just, you know, we're standing there. There's people tied up. There's shotguns pointing at people. And people oh, this is an interesting day out in Bend. <laughs> Justin, can, can you give us an update as far as uh, it? Uh, Jim's uh, where Jim's at now. What Jim's doing? Um, it, does he does he have any future internet projects to once again become a mega sensation, or, or off in a whole different other world now? Yeah, the the short answer is no. Uh, he is a he is a web genius. Um, he has a, a web company called Superpower Design, so he's really great at, at creating and, and coding uh, websites. But there's been all kinds of drama in his life. It continues, um, and uh, and he's very much the way that he is right there in the film to this day. I think that's that's the thing with Jim. You uh, you get what you get what you get. If our audience would like to ask a question, we have a microphone there and there for any of our filmmakers. Please don't be shy. Step on up if there's something that you would like to delve into further about any any one of their films. Uh, I'm, of course, always curious about the motivations behind a, a story of, of Justin, what made you want to make a film of, about Jim? I mean, obviously, it's a compelling story, but it's such a behind-the-scenes thing to even be able to find out and discover that there's this guy who, who, who did this stuff. So uh, how, what got you to the point, like, okay, I need to make a film about this? I mean, you mentioned that I'm a a pretty prolific filmmaker and I, I love making films, but I, uh, not a, you know, will never be like a, a starving artist. So I always split my time between working, um, teaching and then doing my own, my own stuff, which I largely own, which is kind of the trade off. And one of the big projects that I worked on for a number of years was for Cisco systems, which is one of the world's biggest companies and a huge internet, you know, a huge internet company. 
and I was deep into their their lore and their history, and Flash was was getting close to being killed. And it just seemed, again, like a nice confluence of events where I knew some of these folks and I could see this stuff counting down. And Adobe, to a certain degree, was interested in their history and their lore. But even though this was a huge cultural phenomenon, they don't want to go near this stuff with a 10-foot pole <laughs> for some of the reasons you saw, right? I mean, if the highlight, one of the highlights of your, 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 uh, your creative prowess is like a, a frog being ripped up in a blender, the end. You're, you're not going to put that on like the, the company website anytime soon. So again, Jim just seemed to be that perfect example of somebody who did all the things you're supposed to do to be a, to be, to be great and then never to, to be recognized for that. And as independent filmmakers and creators, I'm sure all of us to a certain degree, we can all identify with that in some level. Well, Walter, I feel like I owe you if nothing else more floor time for, for what we did to your, your world, world premiere. So the floor is yours if you want to go into more detail about the making of or favorite memory from it. Obviously, we created a new memory today uh, associated with your film. You will never forget your, the world premiere of your film. Uh, but if there's any further aspects of your film Blood Money that you would really like to go into and explain, especially since your film leaves a lot of mystery. <laughs> That's a maxi filmmaker up there. Um, you know, I don't have a whole lot to say other than I'm not surprised to some regard, like I was telling you, that everything fell apart right before Blood Money because making the movie, pretty much everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. I think we spent more time in the desert just waiting for planes to stop flying above us than we did actually shooting a film. And that's just one of many, many hardships on that project. We have a question over here. Walter, I, I was particularly impressed with the quality of the acting in, in your short film. Thank and you, I was thank wondering, you. where did you find these actors? How did you happen to pick the ones you picked? Um, I guess I have a talent for convincing people to do really uncomfortable things. Um, because I don't think anybody expected that they were going to be doing seven hour round trips for four days spread out across four months uh, to film this movie. Uh, you know, basically in Eugene, I'm part of a growing film community um, called Lane County Filmmakers and kind of a tangential project that we have is Lane County Film Actors, a lot of which there's a few people in the crowd here that are associated with. And, you know, I just had a lot of people read the script, which I didn't know was getting passed around. And I had people reach out to me to audition for it. And that was a really weird experience because I never had people care about my work before that. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I just did auditions, found a few people that I thought were cool, and then they all showed up with Western accents. And that was basically how we, <laughs> we made the movie. Do we have any other questions? Okay, since we, oh, uh, uh, Mike, did, did you have a question? I'm just wondering, Walter, are you, are you thinking about making a prequel? Just to give us a little more. Yeah, maybe you need to explain the episode five thing at the start, too. So episode five, this was uh, over the last year and a half or so, maybe two years now, uh, in the Eugene film community, we've been working on this, I guess, an anthology YouTube series called Scene in Eugene. And basically, it's every production is a different cast and crew. And there's short films that kind of highlight some of the activity that's happening in Eugene. And so this was episode five of that, and I think there's 10 or so, eight, eight, nine, 10. I don't know how many there are, 10? I'm getting 10? Can I get an 11? <laughs> 11? No. Any, any other questions for our filmmakers? I realize we are way, way, way behind schedule, so I'd, I'd like to move on to our next program, uh, if at all possible. But Nathaniel, thank you for stepping in for Hannah. Appreciate it. Thank you, Walter, for, you. for the time and for your extraordinary patience. If you want to meet me out in the lobby, I'll buy you a beer. Uh, <laughs> and Justin, thank you as, as well for your patience, too. Our next program, we are calling Coping with the Times. Uh, this is a series of films of people trying to find ways to deal with our present circumstances. Uh, we have a film that deals with life on Zoom calls and... Uh, life after wildfires and coping with um, you know PTSD and uh, as as veterans, 
um, extraordinary number of films. There will be a slight change in, in the program as far as the lineup goes. Inheritance is one of the films we were having some technical issues with because, of course, today, right? <laughs> uh, so Inheritance, we're going to show last out of this program instead of in sequence following the Dolce A Decorum Est. Thank you, everyone, for sticking with me. Um, and then at the end of this program, we will welcome our next round of filmmakers up. And then we have one block after that and then our awards. So thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for being a part of the 2021 Climate Independent Film Festival.